Hey everyone, this lesson is on the WNT beta catenin signaling pathway and today we're going to talk about what the pathway actually does, how it actually operates, and we're going to talk about what are some of the problems that can occur in this pathway that can lead to different types of cancer. So to begin, the WNT signaling pathway involves WNT, which is um, a series of growth stimulatory factors. Now, the WNT uh, stimulatory factors are actually proteins that have a palmitoleic acid attached to them for binding purposes. Now, there are 19 WNT genes in mammals. Now, there is some debate on how WNT proteins are transported through the blood, but there is some evidence that they are actually incorporated into exosomes. So, the exosomes allow for the WNT to be transported throughout the body. Now, for beta-catenin, beta-catenin is regulated primarily through degradation. And the entire pathway itself, WNT signaling pathway, is a highly conserved pathway. And it's because it is critically important in embryonic development. And in particular, it's important in the development of the heart. And because it is critically important in embryonic development, mutations or problems in this pathway can lead to carcinogenesis. Now in an inactivated state, the beta-catenin is bound and regulated by a large protein complex that contain proteins such as axin, CKI, GSK3, APC, DVL or disheveled, and beta-TRCP. Now this whole complex is known as the destruction complex and it's called the destruction complex because this complex of proteins leads to the phosphorylation ubiquitination, and ultimately the proteosomal degradation of beta-catenin. So how does this all happen? Well, beta-TRCP is actually E3 ubiquitin ligase, and the phosphorylation of beta-catenin signals beta-TRCP to ubiquitinate the beta-catenin. The ubiquitination of beta-catenin leads to proteosomal degradation. So this keeps cellular levels of beta-catenin low. So again, in an inactivated state, the destruction complex leads to the phosphorylation and ubiquitination of beta-catenin, which leads to its proteasomal degradation and causes low levels of beta-catenin in the cell. Now, in an activated state, the WNT is transported in an exosome from somewhere in the body, and the WNT actually acts as an extracellular signaling molecule to activate its receptor, frizzled. Now, when the receptor frizzled is activated, it actually leads to the phosphorylation of LRP. And when LRP is phosphorylated, it induces the translocation of the destruction complex to the region of the membrane near the frizzled and LRP receptors. When disheveled or DVL binds to LRP, the DVL becomes activated. And the activation of DVL leads to the inhibition of the destruction complex, preventing beta-catenin from being phosphorylated and preventing beta-TRCP from incorporating into the destruction complex and preventing it from actually ubiquitinating the beta-catenin. And because the beta-catenin does not get ubiquitinated, it does not get degraded in the proteasome, which leads to an increase in beta-catenin levels. Now the transcription factor TCF mediates the genetic action of the WNT signaling pathways leading to the induction of WNT target genes. However, when the WNT signaling pathway is inactivated, TCF is actually inhibited and bound to Grucho, which actually inhibits TCF and inhibits its ability to bind to the DNA. But when beta-catenin levels rise in the cytosol during the activated state, the beta-catenin translocates into the mitochondria, dislodging the Grucho from TCF, and the beta-catenin itself binds to TCF, and the TCF then leads to the transcription of WNT target genes. These WNT target genes then lead to growth and proliferation, and the WNT target genes can include genes involved in microtubular formation, it can include genes in migration as well. All of these functions important in growth, proliferation, and development. Now, as I mentioned before, any issues or mutations in this pathway can lead to cancer. And one instance is with an APC mutation. APC stands for adenomatous polyposis coli. So even if WNT is not present to activate frizzled, 
and this pathway is inactivated, if there is an APC mutation, this can lead to increases in beta catenin levels and activation of the beta catenin signaling pathway leading to growth and proliferation. So why can a mutation in the APC protein lead to increases in cellular beta catenin levels and activation of this pathway? It's because loss of function of APC as a component of the destruction complex leads to stabilization of beta catenin and prevents the beta catenin from becoming ubiquitinated and degraded by the proteasome. And remember the beta TRCP is a protein responsible for ubiquitinating the beta catenin and targeting it for proteasomal degradation. If this process does not occur, beta catenin levels can increase and then this pathway can be activated even when there's no WNT present. So to summarize the WNT beta catenin pathway, some of the important key points to remember is that when this pathway is inactivated, beta catenin levels are low because of proteasomal degradation. And when this pathway is activated, beta catenin levels are high because there's no ubiquitination and there's no proteasomal degradation. And when this pathway is activated, the effects of the pathway include regulation of development and increases in growth and proliferation. That's why this pathway can be critically important during cancer pathogenesis. Anyways, guys, that was an overview of the WNT beta catenin signaling pathway. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.